So I made a, a specialty of um, interviewing and profiling over the years. I did about three dozen um, of the surf pioneers and um, out of that body of work came a number of books. I ended up writing three books um, on Del Velzi was the first one, who was a surfer and surfboard pioneer from the South Bay. And then I did a follow-up book on Bing Copeland with Bing surfboards. He was like a protege of, of Velzi's. So the next generation, you know. Um, and then I was uh, privileged to also be able to do the book on Hobie Alter, who was uh, obviously raised right here in Laguna Beach, um, overlooking uh, Thalia Street, and where he started making surfboards uh, in 1954. And of course became a legend in uh, surfing and sailing because he not only was a, a great uh, uh, maker of surfboards, he went on to design and build the Hobie catamaran, which was the, really changed the, the whole face of sailing as, as everybody knew it as a, the people's boat, <laughs> right? Valzi was an amazing character. I mean, just a one of a kind, um, exemplified really to me, what California represented was all about because he was not just a surfer. He was a, a horse, you know, he was a horseman and cowboy. I mean, working cowboy when he was younger. He worked on ranches uh, here in California and also in Arizona. You know, he was like a guy that had one foot in the pioneer west, you know of the cowboys and the cattle ranches, and one foot in the modern era of, you know, aerospace industries and you know, foam and resin and all of that stuff, you know. So it's like he kind of straddled this huge historical chasm, you know. Um, he started <clears throat> making surfboards like at 16, 17 years old um, in the South Bay. Um, in Manhattan Beach, and he got the world's first, he got the California's first uh, uh, recognition as a surfboard maker, which hadn't existed before. That was like back in the late 40s. And um, opened a shop on Manhattan Boulevard just up from the pier. Um, it was the first surf shop in this part of the world. So, built an empire and lost it all. <laughs> yeah, they broke the mold with Del Velzi, I'll tell you that. But a little bit of Del rubbed off on all these other people, you know? Uh, Bing, for one, uh, when, he, when Bing Copeland was like 13, 14 years old, he would get out of school and rush over to Velzi's shop so he could sweep up the, the shavings or do anything, you know, for the, for the master. <laughs> And then, of course, Bing went on to create his own surfboard empire, which is still going today. It's amazing. Hobie, too, was, uh, you know, uh, no doubt somewhat influenced by, by Velzi. In fact, you know, Ho Hobie told me how he and, uh, and a buddy went up to, to Velzi's shop in Manhattan to kind of snoop around to see what he was up to. Uh, so then, you know, Hobie could come back here to Laguna Beach and sort of <laughs> start making surfboards in the garage of his family home down there on the Gaviota near Thalia Street. All of these guys are like, you know, uh, pioneers, entrepreneurs, you know, sort of can-do people. I mean, Hobie was like a self-taught um, engineer, machinist. He would make his own boat parts, you know, out of aluminum blocks, you know, on, on a lathe, you know, and it's like people have no idea of the, the, the skills uh, and the innovation uh, that these, these people had that 
that to me was like what California represented, you know, in every way, as well as the outdoor lifestyle, the surfing, all the rest of it. Um, th these, these were people at a time and place that's probably never going to be seen again, unless you think that Silicon Valley is somewhat like that these days. I don't know, maybe so. Yeah. Without the water. Without the water. Yeah, low tide. <laughs>